Hi everyone, this is Achuta Bhava from Nightlight Astrology, and today we are going to take a look at a little known aspect called Antitia. Um, there are three Antitias being formed right now between the Sun and Saturn, Jupiter, and Pluto. Um, and because the Sun is currently in the sign of Sagittarius, it is in Jupiter's power, and Jupiter is in its fall. And so the about the next five to six days of these antitias that are being formed can become a lot more potent than you might think um, especially if you've never heard of them before they can really it can be an interesting thing to learn about you know from the get-go but um, also uh, people don't always pay a lot of attention to antitias but when one planet is in the power of another with the antitia the power dynamics change dramatically and so they're really important to pay attention to. And I'm going to show you an example of why today and then explain how this works and, and what you could watch for um, in the days ahead. And this is something that almost snuck under my radar. I really didn't have it written down as something big I wanted to talk about this month. And then I was, I was, I was actually dealing with something in my personal life. And all of a sudden I was like, wait, this feels like the sun and Saturn. Why do I feel like the sun and Saturn? And I was like, oh my gosh, it's there's an Antitia being formed right now, of course. And so then I sat down mapped it all out this morning and was like, this is, uh, this is going to, uh, take the cake for what I'm going to, I had something else planned, but I was like, no, this is it. So, um, so that's what we're going to do today. Now, before I dive into that, I want to remind you all that I'm in the middle of my 40 day end of the year Kickstarter campaign. If you enjoy my work, if you share it, if you get something good out of it from time to time, if it's uh, a source of, you know, spiritual companionship on the path, um, then please consider donating. I really appreciate it. I get a lot of things done every year through the Kickstarter. It's a big part of how my whole operation runs. So uh, if you're able to, please do so. There's a link in the comments section. You can click on it. You can pick up rewards. There's reward readings, exclusive lectures. Um, there is over 50% off to all three of my online programs, including my Ancient Astrology for the Modern Mystic course. So you can get all my 21, 2021 programs over 50% off. Uh, there's a lot of cool things. So uh, we're trying to get to 691 backers as of making this. We're at about 153, um, which is uh, we're on a really good pace right now. So thank you so much for everyone who's already pitched in. And if you haven't, uh, I'd love your support. Um, and if and if you're not able to, uh, just throw up a prayer that uh, you know we be able to keep doing good work and keep keep growing and um, and you know getting getting better at this and serving more people. Really appreciate it, guys. Thank you. All right, so. Um, Antitia, what is it? What's going on? Why is this a big deal? Uh, all right. So first of all, you can see here's the real time clock and I want to point them out to you. So the Antitia are being formed between the sun in Sagittarius and Saturn. This is the one that just happened. And so I, I had noticed it yesterday and I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, there it is. Um, and then you can see that it's going to also move into, if you know what an Antitia is already, it's going to move into the Antitia with, um, it's going to form with Jupiter and then with Pluto all in a row. Now, the reason that this Antitia is so impactful, and I'm going to write this down so that you can follow it. If you're kind of like a student of astrology, you have the sun in Sagittarius, uh, sun in Jupiter's power, that's the Sagittarius being the sign of Jupiter, and forming Antitia with Jupiter, Jupiter is in its fall. So what does that mean? Well, imagine that I went over to your house for dinner, but let's say that you had COVID. <laughs> that's a terrible thing. Sorry. <laughs> Awful thing to... Okay. So let's just say that you were... You had you had the Rona, <laughs> you were, you were dealing with it. My mom just got done dealing with it. Um, my best friend's mom is currently dealing with it. It is not pretty, but anyway, that's kind of the picture of the Jupiter and its fall is really connected, uh, especially with Pluto to the proliferation, which is a Jupiterian thing of something that is more malignant. For example, Jupiter in um, Capricorn, I've seen in at least a dozen charts in the past year of my practice for people who were dealing with um, tumors uh, or lumps, not necessarily cancerous, but just things that grow that aren't necessarily good. Um, that's Jupiter and Saturn sign in its fall, growing, but maybe growing things that are more Saturnine that have to do with decay or um, or, or death or or disease, unfortunately. So that's part of the pandemic signature of the year. So imagine that I go over to your house and you have you have a sickness and um, 
you're going to, and I'm like, I'm ready for dinner. So what do you serve me? You serve me food because you're my host. Jupiter is the host of the sun, but the, the food is contaminated because you're sick. So then I get sick, right? That's the basic idea when you see one planet in the power of another planet and the other planet who is the host is all jacked up. So we have this kind of signature in the sky right now. And the main difficult one is the sun to Jupiter. The sun to Saturn, really not as bad because Saturn's in its own sign and a sun-Saturn conjunction, though it's not always easy with a well dignified Saturn is not a huge deal. But when you get into that conjunction with the fallen Jupiter by Antitia, that's when it becomes problematic. Pluto, not necessarily easy either. So <clears throat> let's see how this plays out in the dates. You need to see the two degrees for an Antitia to add up to 30. So when you get the sun at 252 and you've got Saturn at about 2751, they're just separating from an Antitia. Their two degrees have to add up to 30 across the signs of Capricorn and Sagittarius. And I'll explain more of the technical pieces of an Antitia uh, in a minute. So if you watch this, we need to see here's the sun going to about you know four to five degrees now if you see the sun i'm just doing this very loosely for those of you who are more uh technically savvy um the jupiter position is at about 25 degrees and the sun is at five degrees so they're two uh, degree positions add up to 30 so that's the conjunction and that is happening by friday of this week all right and then we want to move it a little bit farther along to get in with pluto and you see that that's going to happen by Sunday. Now, this is bringing us through the Venus Uranus opposition, and it's also bringing us into that um, eclipse on Monday as well. So, this is not a small thing to be happening. Like I said, it sort of flew under my radar. That's actually a key signature of Antitia, by the way, is that there's something a little bit subtle or secretive about them. Anyway, so you can see the two getting together here by Sunday. So if you put all that together, what you're saying is that between now and the eclipse on Monday, you've got several Antitias, a very troubling one with the sun and Jupiter, uh, a fall in Jupiter, and, uh, and then Pluto, as Venus is also perfecting an opposition to Uranus, and then as the lunar eclipse comes into Gemini late Sunday night into Monday morning. So what does this add into the mix of eclipse week for us? Well, um, Actually, before I go into the interpretive piece, let's just pause and take a moment to like explain what an Antitia is. So that way, because conceptually, if you understand what it is, you're going to understand the interpretation a lot more and appreciate it a lot more. And you can actually start feeling it in your body even more. The, the more you understand things in astrology, the easier they get. So <clears throat> imagine that there is a line and the line goes right through the solstice points of zero Capricorn and zero Cancer, the uh, winter and summer solstice in the Western system. Obviously, this is oriented toward the northern, towards the northern hemisphere. But regardless, it is the signs on either side of the solstices equal distance from that zero degree marker that are going to participate in these Antitia. So you have Capricorn and Sagittarius. <clears throat> the sign that comes sort of on one side of the winter solstice and the sign on the exact other side. Go two more signs out and you get to Scorpio and, um, and Aquarius. And then go two more signs out and you get to Libra and Pisces. So when planets are in these signs and the degree total of two planets in these respective signs uh, that I've just highlighted add up to 30, that's when they're at their antitia with one another. And it's considered a kind of secretive form of conjunction. And I'll explain why in a minute. Now, on the other side, the signs that form an antitia around the summer solstice are going to be Cancer and Gemini, Leo and Taurus, and Virgo and Aries, right? So if planets, two planets fall in these signs and fall at degrees that add up to 30, then you also have Antitia. Now, what is an Antitia all about? Well, let's just imagine that we're talking about the climb of the sun upward toward the summer solstice. And then from the summer solstice, the sun starts going down. 
And I'm just going to draw like a little, let's draw a little circle. Here's the sun. Yay. So that's, <laughs> this is like, you know, the sun at the summer solstice, highest point in the sky. Can everyone follow that? Now, imagine that the sun at, let's say, uh, 20 degrees of Gemini, 20 degrees of Gemini, the sun is right here in its pathward up to the longest day of the year. When we get to zero cancer, 10 degrees later, the sun will start moving back down. And when it gets to 10 degrees of cancer, it will be back to the parallel place that the sun was at when it was going upward at 20 degrees of Gemini. So 20 Gemini plus, let's just actually write this in, 20 Gemini and 10 Cancer land on days of the year where there is an equal amount of light and dark in the 24-hour period. The difference is that at 20 Gemini, the sun is still going up to its brightest or longest day of the year, whereas at 10 Cancer, the sun has already rounded that corner and is now coming down. The days are growing shorter. But still, at these respective days of the year, where the degree totals add up to 30 in the appropriate signs relative to that high point of the summer solstice, there's going to be an equal amount of light and dark in the 24-hour day. What that means is that planets that are situated at these degrees, even though they don't share an aspectual relationship with one another, share a kind of secretive conjunction, a secret form of sameness. Conjunction means that the two planets are merging or blending on a certain level. And so when planets are at these degrees, they're similar. They become, it's as though they take on a secretive form of sameness. Okay, so a secretive form of conjunction. Oftentimes, you're going to see, and then there's there's another whole set of antitia called contra antitia, which I won't go into today. Those are the exact same method, but formed around the equinox points. So you can follow that logic out. Contra antitia are going to be a little bit more like a secretive form of opposition, and they have to do with equal but opposite amounts of light and dark. Um, so they have a little bit more of a standoff with one another. And planets on the light half of the year will tend to command the, those that are on the dark half of the year, which were, are said to obey. So that's a whole different concept we're not going into today, but just a little preview. Maybe I'll do a video on it in a Q&A later. Um, planets in Antitia that we're looking at here have a secretive form of sameness. Now, I want to take you backward in time and just give you a sense of why this is so important. Um, about a year ago, actually, let me go back to, yeah. <clears throat> if we go back to about January, um, one thing that you are going to see here is it's it's super important moment in the year. Now, one of the things that I was writing about was at the time was this antitia that was forming between um, Mars and Jupiter. So I want to just show you. Let's put in that zero degree marker uh, across the winter solstice point of zero Capricorn. Here you can see that um, the planet Mars is uh, right here at 16 degrees. And here is... Um, Here's Jupiter at about 13 degrees. And so the degree total between the two was in the process of perfecting. Um, and you can see this um, happening. And this is a week that I was doing a lot of predicting about this, saying, hey, look at this Antitia. The reason that this is really troubling to me is that you have um, Mars hitting a secretive form of conjunction um, with uh, Jupiter over the last few days of the month of January. And Jupiter is in the, Mars is in Sagittarius, which is Jupiter's sign, and Jupiter is in its fall, which means that Jupiter can represent something that brings Mars down. Um, Jupiter has the potential to damage or harm Mars. Um, interesting that Jupiter is in the exaltation of Mars while also in its fall. Um, and I was really puzzled by this, but thought it this really looks like it could be um, rather difficult. And I thought about the downfall of political leaders or really important Mars-like figures. And at first, I was really thinking about military figures as Mars tends to represent that. Um, but of course, what ended up happening was that the 
legendary uh, sports icon, Kobe Bryant, um, died in a helicopter accident along with his daughter and um, some other passengers who were there as well. I don't recall who they were exactly, but I think there might have been some other famous sports icons in the uh in the helicopter. I, I can't recall if someone can maybe remind us in the chat box. But here's a perfect example of the Antitia that we're now seeing again. You have, um, essentially you have Mars, uh, you know, going over to dinner at Jupiter's house and Jupiter is in its fall and is going to therefore be, can't, it can't, either can't give Mars anything or it's actually going to harm Mars because Jupiter's kind of kind of jacked up right so i had said watch for the downfall of mars like figures and we saw the downfall of, of a very famous athlete now that was not something like i had i didn't wasn't expecting it to be an athlete but i was expecting for the potential of this um this exchange to be really rough on mars that mars gets served a, a little bit of a, of a kick in the face by a fallen jupiter so that's the position that we're finding ourselves in again. Now, why? how did I get triggered to this where you can see the sun just going through the conjunction with Saturn? And in the days ahead, we'll go through the uh, Antitia with Jupiter. So what do we expect? We would expect the downfall of solar figures, or we would expect the potential for there to be difficulty for sun stuff. What is sun stuff? Well, that's when we have to kind of, okay, let's go, go back to the basics. Let me pull up in my little notes for the day. Um, so, okay, first of all, very simply, um, if you have the sun as king, leader, president, CEO, or anyone who's sort of powerful or in charge or at the center of things, you're looking at the potential for that kind of a figure to have a downfall, um, to have to face the music or um, deal with setbacks. So yesterday, three things happened that I noticed as the sun was perfecting the Antitia with Saturn. One was that I was really struggling being a dad. Just one of those days where I felt like I was getting about a D plus as, as a dad. <laughs> like, And, you know, like by and large, I feel like, you know, I'm a, I'm a decent dad right? Like I, I don't want to brag or anything. I think I'm an okay dad, but you know, as parents, if any of you guys are parents out there, you know, that once in a while, you just have one of those days where you, you just, you do the like, Oh, like that. I, that sucked. That was brutal. Um, and or you lose your cool or you lose your temper or you snap or something like that. And I just had one of those days and it was actually two days in a row. And I, and I was just like, what is going on? And then I, I saw, I was like, that was part of what led me. But the second thing, the second thing was that Trump, Donald Trump here in the United States, um, that, that there, there's, as news outlets are reporting all across the board, both conservative and liberal, that Trump is signaling that he's starting to accept the transition of power as more states certified the results, sort of crushing any last attempts to, um, you know, swing the election in his favor through the legal challenges and the accusations of fraud and so forth. And, you know, the, they started allowing funds to be distributed for the transition of power. So, and then my dad was dealing with something that was challenging. Um, and then I was talking to a friend of mine whose um, mother just got COVID and whose father has Parkinson's. And so he's really, really worried about his father who has Parkinson's getting COVID from his mom, because obviously it's just the two of them. So it was like, all of a sudden I was like, downfall of King. I feel like a rotten dad. Uh, my dad is struggling. My buddies, I'm talking to my buddy on the phone for a long time about his dad and the fear about his, you know, him getting COVID with Parkinson's why is like dad stuff flaring up so much? I was like, I didn't think the sun was doing anything major right now. Often a planet to look for. Right. And then I was like, Oh yeah. The Antitia between uh, the sun and Saturn, 
you know, the sun Saturn loves to swallow children. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like Saturn is the Kronos is the child eater, right? If, if you want to think about something really bizarre, think about the fact that Jupiter, a planet of beliefs, has been in its fall around uh, paranoid uh, Pluto, uh, which can create paranoia in the sign of Saturn Kronos. And over the past couple of years, we've seen major scandal with Jeffrey Epstein and like underage children and the whole idea of the the God who eats the children. I mean, that I'm not getting into any of the crazy, there's a lot of conspiracy theories around that person. I have, I'm not aware of them. I don't get into all of that, but um, I couldn't help but notice as other theories have been spinning around about child trafficking and, and QAnon and all of that stuff that's out there right now. Um, that, you know, a lot of that has been the expression of a really empowered Saturn with Pluto and a really messed up Jupiter hanging out together too, uh, the, which is the equivalent of, um, you know, there's been some real stuff around, um, around the, what do we want to say? Like the, the, degradation of of children which is definitely a saturn thing like that's that was such a a literal piece of symbolism for me when i was just feeling like i was being that like just like a bad dad and i was like what like oh right sun saturn the the you know the figure of the uh, like suppressive or difficult father figure can really come up with that combination um uh Luckily for me, you know, it's a, it's a temporary transit and I do pretty well normally, like I said, but this was, um, I just noticed it was really acute. And anyway, this symbolism of, of, um, the, the difficulty around, uh, the dichotomy between the old and the young as well. Like one of the, I think one of the things I heard more than anything, um, in the United States recently from a lot of people on both the left and the right is that there, there was like all the, the candidates running for office were extremely old, right? This is, so this is all kind of Saturn, a lot of Saturn heavy stuff right now, right? Anyway, um, all, none of that, uh, you know, is really here nor there, but um, the sun Saturn dynamic came first. So if you were experiencing a little bit of that over the past few days, that's probably why um, you can see that reflected. The sun is also uh, reflective of our sense of action, purpose, direction, ego to a certain extent. The thing that holds us together gives us a, a temporary sense of center and purpose that, you know, and, and oftentimes a, a sense of a mission or quest or heroic journey. And when sun gets into it with Saturn, it's like it can be depressive. We can feel blocked. We can feel lethargic. We can try to get really, really controlling and rigid, and we can be a little bit more domineering. Uh, so, that would be the first part of this. The second part is going to be the actual uh, conjunction with Jupiter. And so the conjunction with Jupiter by Antitia is coming up. Now let's time that out again. Uh, if we move this forward just a little bit, you're going to see that it comes in like, let's say Thursday through Saturday would be the the orb that I would sort of give it, so, so to speak. So the the range in which you can probably feel and notice the effects Thursday through Saturday, that's the same time that Venus is, oppo that Venus is opposing Uranus. So it's at that time that you have this erratic, um, you know, erratic energy, a disruption of some kind from Venus opposite Uranus. Um, and then you have, you know, the sun in this sort of surprising uh, secretive Antitia with fallen Jupiter who can sort of take the sun down. Could we see, you know, health problems from world leaders or um, even, I, I'm not saying, I, I'm certainly not predicting an assassination or anything like that, but could you see something like that happening uh, in some place in the world? Maybe not here or anything, but uh, maybe, who knows, but could you see something like that? Yeah, I mean, with Venus opposite Uranus, that's very uh, sudden and disruptive. And then, you know, the the Antitia between the sun and fallen Jupiter could certainly bring somebody down. But it doesn't have to be so literal and Shakespearean. You know, I mean, that would be, because I know I'll get questions about this, which is why I'm saying it right now. Um, it's not something that I, I would be at the top of my list of what I would expect. Um, more so, you know, could there be scandals emerging about CEOs, uh, you know, in the tech industry or, or someone, um, you know, being 
outed for corporate crimes or you know what i mean like some way in which a, a sun figure takes a fall or a tumble uh, sun figures can be um, you know any any kind of leader really but um and personally we could also pride comes before a fall so you could see you could see some way in which um your the wind is taken out of your sails or if you get too proud or cocky that you stumble this week um be just be careful of the high and mighty vibe also um be careful of people or things that want to knock you down a peg because they're jealous or envious or bitter or something like that um i would also imagine that this there could be a sense of something growing or becoming stronger but um also have to be um aware of of how we're achieving what we want to achieve the fallen jupiter could easily be um you know a little ruthless or sort of crooked in its dealings and how it wants to go and achieve success or something like that so that's that's something to just something to pay attention to um and could also certainly mean that there's the 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 downfall of um like I, I could see someone's ego getting bruised by virtue of um, a relationship um, falling apart or changing suddenly. And that's the Venus opposite Uranus dynamic. Um, so it, as, as the sun is perfecting. Now, if you go beyond that to Sunday, then the sun gets into it with Pluto. And it's very similar, a feeling of death and rebirth of d very deep transformation. And you may not see it coming because there's, it can sneak up a little bit. I've noticed whenever an Antitia is involved, because it's not that the planets aren't in a traditional aspect with one another. They're sharing something that's a little bit more esoteric. There's a secret sameness that they have, um, but it's not like a traditional line of sight as an aspect would be. Okay, so I just wanted to because I recognized it and I sort of called myself out, which is the really the great thing about doing astrology, by the way, is that if you do astrology long enough and you feel yourself getting caught up in something, um, it which by the way is a lot easier to do if you're uh, if you're if you're adding in spiritual practice every day. It's like I say it at least three videos a week. I'm like I'm always telling people, you know meditate every day, pray every day, do something every day to get into a centered reflective place. You can quiet down and let your, your mind and your spirit come forth a little bit. It's really hard for the spin dwelling spirit soul to come out when we're busy all the time. So if you do that, you know, um, right now, if you do that, then occasionally what you're going to, you're going to notice is like all of a sudden you're really getting wrapped up in something. And that feeling of getting really wrapped up in something that you don't feel, suddenly you feel a little out of control. Um, not like you should be like hyper rigid and controlling about everything in your life, but just you feel like you're getting grabbed by something, the grahas, the grabbers, the planets. Then you go, wait, what's going on? And then suddenly you'll notice, oh, look at all these antitias forming. Um, and that's how it, it tends to be that way with Antitias. For whatever reason, they always tend to slip under the radar with me. Like I should be more proactive in looking for them. And I often am, but um, especially when you have this case with Sagittarius planets like the sun, we're going to get some of this with Mercury pretty soon. Venus will go through it as well. When they get into Sagittarius, um, they're, they're going to uh, hit the Antitia with at, at least Jupiter or at least um, Pluto. Have to look and see if they catch up to... Uh, Jupiter and Saturn before they change signs. I'm not sure about that, but uh, you know, these are these are things that are are definitely worth paying attention to. Like I, after seeing what happened last year with the Mars dynamic, which is maybe a little bit more ruthless, right? Mars can be a little bit more intense like that. But when I when I saw the um, news that Kobe Bryant died in a helicopter accident, not that I was any big Kobe Bryant fan, really, but I was like wow, like that's a vivid example of uh, not just any Antitia, but an Antitia where the one planet uh, is in the sign of another planet who's debilitated. And then that's when you get that potential for real downfall. So at any rate, I thought this was kind of an interesting, geeky, uh, fun topic for the day. So I hope that you enjoy it. Please leave your comments section in the comments below. Tell me what you think of it. Do you have any Antitias in your birth chart? Um, 
go look for them, see if you can find them. Uh, and have you noticed anything already with the sun Saturn Antitia? I'd be curious to hear if I was the only one who really felt and noticed that. Um, finally, remember, uh, my Kickstarter is running through the end of the year. Um, ring in the bell every day. We're trying to next big milestone is 200 backers. I think we're probably 40 some shy today. So if you can pitch in and help out, uh, pick up discounted tuition or one of the other rewards I offer, um, I would be uh, really thankful. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and we'll see you again soon.